So even if your client is telling you the story, it's only part of the information. As most of you know, a lot of the communication happens non-verbally. And also verbally there are a lot more things which are being said than just the words. The how of the words tells you a lot more than the word itself. For instance, if we take the word darling, darling has a certain meaning. But if it is pronounced in different ways, darling, 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 it can have a very different meaning depending on how we pronounce it. And then, of course, there's the body language. And we can add to that also the energetical language, how the person's energy moves if they're talking about something. The choice of words is often, yeah, what you could say Freudian, because it's an associative process. And if there are certain emotions going on inside the head, the choice of words will tend to reflect that. But also the speech patterns will tell a lot of what is really going on. And to really understand the speech patterns, we have to understand also, you could say, the, um, the cycle time of different processes. So the brain moves relatively quickly, facts move relatively quickly. So if a person is giving a very factual account, they can, they will typically talk quite quickly. So um, my boss is called Charles, my co-worker is called Anne, and I have uh, uh, three clients called Tom, Jerry and Mickey. So then also the, there will be very little inflection. There's very little emotion, it's just the mind which is talking, which is handing out facts. But what you want is, you want to get more than just facts. You want the client in a way to show a little bit of what their feelings are. And for the person to able to feel their own feelings, to realize what is going on with them, they will need to talk a little bit more slowly. And Often when people are talking slowly, but start speaking more quickly, it is because they want to avoid a negative feeling. And they will talk slowly if they want to allow the feeling. So if they like their boss, they might say, yeah, my boss, yeah, he's called Charles. And then they will allow a little pause to when we linger in a positive associations they have with their with their boss and if they have a negative uh, association they will tend to in a way cut themselves off or cut off the association yeah and my third client is Mickey so shall we move on to another subject um, let's talk about uh, you or my tasks <laughs> so without allowing in a way, the pause for Mickey to resonate internally, already moving on to the next subject. This is often a sign that persons are repressing something. So if they're telling about a certain episode in their life, if the speed goes up and they move in a way from an emotional level to a factual level, that should in a way send some warning bells in you, like, okay, this is a very interesting period to have a look at, because the person is currently repressing it, so they're still not comfortable with it. Another thing to look at is also the body language, because um, we are ultimately animals, and animals have instincts. And there are ultimately a few ways for us humans to, to deal with problems. We can fight, uh, we can run away, we can faint, and we can freeze. So, four patterns. Fighting, fainting, fleeing, freezing. And if you know what your client's pattern is, like whenever they encounter a problem, do they tend to fight, do they tend to flee, 
uh, freeze up or uh, faint. And often also you can see similar behaviors if they're talking about a stressful period or something which they're still having a problem dealing with. Like the shoulders will tend to hunch forward a bit if they're in a fighting mode because a hunched forward shoulder will give more reach to the arms which are our primary weapons as humans. So hunching forward shoulders is often a sign that the person is in a way in fighting mode, that there is some anger, some resentment. Often when the person is making themselves uh, smaller, this is a form of freezing. So often the shoulders will be pulled in a bit and the person might duck their head a little bit forward or inward. So the person will hunch up a little bit. Uh, when they're afraid or uncomfortable with something. So this is often a, a hiding mode or a fleeing mode um, they get into. Some people become very, um, in a way, freeze up, they become unresponsive. Um, so they're often, in a way, in situations where the situation would elicit a wrong response from them and by not responding they're protecting themselves. So often the person will react by staring, by not answering or their voice going very flat. So they will uh, stare at you and just say like, well that wasn't the case or that wasn't the problem. And the flatness of the voice, the staring look is a sign that yeah, they're actually quite stressed out. And not everybody in a way panics or stresses in the same way. So it is important to realize these different patterns with uh, different clients. The fainting is often a little bit the difficult one to, to catch. Um, because the person will, in a way, uh, fainting is, is a method of getting away and showing that you're non-aggressive. So often the, uh, the client will take a more um, open or disarming attitude. So often they're leaning back a bit, throwing the shoulders backwards, uh, showing their belly more. And often they might react by offering something like tea, cookie, uh, or um, taking something, um, or by um, uh, preening. Um, so preening is often uh, in animals which are stressed they will also like, like wash their hands or their face or their ears and humans also have similar behaviors like they might scratch their nose or um, uh, scratch themselves or to just place their hands somewhere else um, and this allows them to focus on themselves and also thereby also deny or um, let go of some anxiety well, at the same time, in a way, readying or preparing the body for potential problems. So, learning the body language of yeah, different types of people, then identifying which body language yeah, corresponds with your client can be very helpful in decoding their, uh, their narrative. Energetically, um, what you see is that more or less of the energy body will become active depending on how important something is. Um, because also the energy body is just like the brain an associative mechanism. So a person might be talking about something which you might think is a huge thing like the death of their father. But if you look at their energy body and they're talking about like, yes my father died and you notice that, okay, yes, there's some vibration on the emotional level and there's a lot of vibration on the mental level. So they think about it and they feel it, but the rest of their energy body is not responding to it. Then the person is, yeah, in a way, not that affected by it. Maybe they didn't have that much connection with their parents in the first place. Or maybe they're just good at dealing with, uh, with such instances of yeah, sudden loss. And these to them are not problematic uh, 
situations. The opposite might also be true, that they're talking about something which you might think is completely trivial, but which to them has a great symbolic meaning. Like, I lost my wedding ring. And you might think, like, it's a symbol. <laughs> You're married, you buy another ring. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> but for some people, that wedding ring can have a tremendous significance. And the loss of it is not just the loss of the ring. It is making them doubt the whole situation. It is making them doubt their marriage. It is making them reconsider their vows. Um, it can be a, a life-shaking realization for them to, uh, to have something like this happen to them. And you will see that also in the aura, mainly. But you can also see often some reaction in the chakras, which will open up or close up, depending on their acceptance. So it's good to try to feel, in a way, the connection you have with your client and see how it changes when they're talking about things. Often when they're talking about something which is stressful to them, you'll feel that your connection is changing and often becoming more limited because their self-mechanisms, self-defense mechanisms, will start blocking out any alien energy, including that of their, uh, their therapist. So often when I feel that somehow the connection is being disturbed, I pay extra attention. And when I feel the connection is very open and comfortable, I just allow the narrative to fly by without having to focus too much on it. Because apparently what they're saying is not where the problem really lies. Even though the situation might be dramatic, they've apparently dealt with it or integrated with it relatively successfully. So, that's a lot to think about, of course, in the intake. And you can't do it all consciously all of the time. But try to develop a meditative attitude so part of you will notice these things or can reflect on these things and allow yourself also to take control over that intake process. Just allow yourself to say like, okay, wait a moment, let's look at this a little bit more deeply or isn't there more here? Can you tell a little bit more about it? And then you slow down the narrative so to create more space to explore this point which is causing the stress. So I hope this will be a helpful tip in uh, working with the unspoken layers of the intake.